Hi, this is Steve Adam, Co. Spectrum Interiors. We're going to talk about lighting and how important it is. Most lighting that's done today is done without a whole lot of plan. It's especially important in brand new homes or remodels that a floor plan is done and then a reflected ceiling plan is done on top of that. So we know exactly where our light is positioned and it's based on what we really want the lighting plan to accomplish for us. And that all revolves strongly around ambiance, mood, and feeling. Okay, so the idea is that we want to see the effects of the lighting, not just the lighting sources themselves. Now, in certain cases, like chandeliers and things, the aesthetical value of the fixture is very important, just as the lighting is very important. Another aspect is that the more we can zone lighting and put different fixtures on dimmers or rheostats, the better we are because it gives us a broader range of play with the emotion that can be generated by the space. In addition to that, we need to know how dark or light the space is going to be, what kind of textures, what kind of materials, things of that nature, and what it is that we're going to be lighting, whether it's cocktail tables, seating groups, artwork, sculpture, and all of that. So I'm going to just cover very briefly three different lamp styles or bulb styles. The lamp is what the professionals call them. And I'm going to start first with the one that most people are acquainted with, and that is the A lamp or the, you know, typical bulb that would go into a regular table lamp. Okay, the situation with this is that light is emanating in all directions. So there is no particular control of this. All right. Then we have another type called a reflector lamp. And these are usually in spots or floods. And so it's very focused lighting that goes out in a direction like that because it has a base reflector. Now a spot is gonna be tighter and a flood is gonna be wider angle, all right? Now, a refinement of that concept is a bulb like this. It's called an MR16. You can see that relative to the reflector lamp, it's quite a bit smaller. Now this operates off 120 volts. This is low voltage, or let's say 12 volts. It takes a transformer to step down the voltage so that you can operate these things. But these are much more controlled, and on top of that, they're also color corrected. They're much more balanced. When I say color corrected, we're talking about the color circle, the rainbow, you know, all the colors that you have. It's very balanced in the warm and cool spectrum, and so it renders cool colors and warm colors very equally. Okay, that's why they're used in jewelry stores because a diamond splits light into the colors of the rainbow and that's part of what they call fire. So they want those gems to have a lot of fire, a lot of spark, a lot of color. These types of fixtures or bulbs accomplish that. Okay, now in addition to that, if we look at, uh, let's say the wall and the ceiling, okay, the way it, uh, Fixture's position, depending on what it is you want to light, determines a lot of things. Let's say this is going to be a piece of artwork. And depending on how low or high the ceiling is, is going to depend on where we position that lamp and what angle we attack it from, so to speak. So you can see that if we were to put a center line of this lamp and it strikes the center of this art object, each lamp is going to have a different beam spread and a different intensity to it. Okay, so we would have to determine, well, how much light do we want to put on this surface or this artwork? How far away is the source going to be? What's the beam spread? How tight do we need this? Like if we need more control than that MR16 lamp comes in, you know, narrow spot, spot, flood, things of that nature. So what we're trying to work around here is a concept called photometrics. Okay, photometrics is all about the performance of these bulbs, like beam spread, intensity, you know, the further away light travels, the less intense it becomes. You get up close to a light that's very, very bright, you get way back from it, obviously it's not as brilliant or as intense. And you consider a concept very similar to the old-fashioned screw-on type nozzle on a hose. If you open it up, it just sprays out very wide and, and very gently. Okay, you can wash your car that way. If you screw it down tight, you, now you have a pencil stream of water that can knock dirt off a sidewalk or other things. And if you're in a 
nice water fight, it, it will go out and touch somebody, you know, uh, and it will travel a lot farther. So it's the same kind of concept. In other words, and, and the wattage too is kind of like pressure. The, uh, the, the more pressure is applied, the further it goes out. So, you know, a 40 watt just doesn't have as much push and punch as a 100, 150, 300 watt, that type of thing. So we want to understand that if the lamp does the job, it's not the holder or the can. That acts as like your hand, okay? It just holds it, that's all, and directs it. It's the lamp that does the job. And so we have to work at this lighting plan backwards. We have to determine what kind of effect, what kind of lighting illumination levels to bring in a lot of variety and a lot of interest and to, let's say, enhance textures. If a wall is very textured, we might want to have lighting that's in a row that's grazing the wall. The light beam is coming down to accentuate the texture. If you take a bunch of lamp fixtures and you let, if you could, come at it directly, you could take a textured surface and actually flatten it. In other words, it, it looks flatter and not textured, basically because there's no shadowing. Okay, so that will give you a little bit of understanding about the intricacies and also the available aspects of how to handle lighting in a proper way to get the most for everything that you do, to make the architecture come alive, to make the furniture come alive, to have more ambiance mood and variety within the space all right so we'll take up on this and in other topics here in the further series and further installments the steve adamco spectrum interiors wishing you a very wonderful day